I'm going to share a simple Max patch to integrate the Livid controller into Cycling74's Max to make it easier to use the controls and get the data where you want it. MIDI is nice, but it's just a bunch of numbers. It's a lot easier to understand and troubleshoot if you use names. First, I'll want to get MIDI data into my patch. I'll use the MIDI in object and a couple other things, and then confirm that I'm getting data. Of course, we'll use the change object because we only want new MIDI messages. Take a look, press some buttons, set the port, and yes, it's all good. We're getting data, getting the MIDI note pitches. Next, I'll use Max to generate some names that I can then match up with the controls. This makes everything faster by patching it, and if I want to change the names, it's more scalable than typing in a list. Uzi will bang a bunch of times on the name Grid into Sprint F, which combines the name with the number from Uzi. I have an abstraction called To Call that makes it easy to store all these names in a data storage object called Call. I'll make a button so Uzi will do its thing, and add a print object so we can see what's going on to the coal. We can take a look at our names in the call too. Okay, those look great. Back to the stuff on the left, we will match these names with the MIDI data. We'll use counter to output the names from the call we just made. Every time a new MIDI message comes in, it'll hit that counter and hit the index in the call. And we'll use this pack object to combine the index and the name that we get out of the call. I'll also add a trigger up here that will set a few things up in order for the whole process. We'll want to reset the call and we'll also want to reset our counter to zero. And that will clear everything and then we'll just make the names. Great, I'll add a message so we can see what is happening. Now I'll press each grid button to match the MIDI with a name. This works great. Now I want to name the other controls on my controller. So what I'm going to do is I'll set up those names in message boxes, giving each section of my controller a pretty obvious name. I'll separate left from right and the different control types. I'll patch it all together so that when I just click on one of these message boxes, it generates all the names right into the call. Now all I have to do is click on a name, then click on the controls for my controller to match them up with the name. So now I'll do the top row and just click each button in order, and click on the row bot name, and just click on all those bottom row buttons. And then next we'll do the encoder buttons. So now that all the buttons are ready, and we can take a look and see that we get an easy way to understand names when we press a button. We'll just reroute this MIDI into the call and we'll give it a test. And we can see what comes out when we press the button is the name for the individual buttons. Cool. Now that the buttons are done, we can do the sliders, knobs, and encoders. I'll repatch the MIDI so it comes from the CCs instead of notes. I'll repeat the process for each section. Now that we have all of our MIDI to names tables set up, I'll clean up a bit and we can see the wonderful results. Call has an annoying feature that is prepending the data type, so I'll use this route object to get rid of that word symbol that comes in uh, just to clean things up. And then I'll just move some stuff around, patch things together, and we'll get our MIDI output over here and just clear up some space. Okay, good. So then we'll do the same thing. We'll take the unpack so we can match the velocity coming from either the notes or the CCs. And then we'll copy these things and attach them to the notes. 
and get the note input for MIDI parse. And now we can test it all. And when we press the buttons and move the knobs and sliders, we get nice names and then values for those things.